Hello, I am Edward Despot. I am uh, Alberto Moreno. We are both a gastroenterology consultant working at the Royal Free Hospital in London. And uh, today it is an honor and a pleasure to uh, talk to you about our recently accepted paper in gastrointestinal endoscopy, GIE, uh, which relates to our experience, an international experience of two European centers, which we collaborated with Professor Andrea May, and the paper relates to the treatment of small bowel varices by using double balloon enteroscopy, facilitating the injection of small bowel varices with cyanoacrylate. So Alberto, um, uh, could you kindly talk us through the summary or the abstract of our paper just so that the audience can understand the background and then we'll discuss it in some greater depth. Yeah, so small bowel viruses, as you know, are uh, an uncommon consequence of portal hypertension. So one to five percent of the small bowel of the viruses are ectopic viruses and 34 percent of them are in the small bowel. Of course, the first line treatment is uh, um, radiological intervention, but then uh, in some patients this is not feasible and uh, options became limited. So we performed a retrospective study, uh, as you say, in, in two centers from in over 10 months, from December 2015 to um, October 2016. So we performed uh, 10 double balloon enteroscopy in uh, uh, six patients, uh, four were women and two male, and median age was 68.5, and we found uh, 13 nests of uh, uh, viruses that we treated with uh, cyanoacrylate injections. Now, at 30 days follow-up, uh, only one patient developed a mild recurrent uh, mid-gut bleeding, which, required, which was treated conservatively. So, Ed, what do you think is the main value of this procedure? Yes, thanks, Al. Um, it is a procedure that needs to be um, done judiciously and uh, in a select group of patients because the injection of cyanoacrylate can be associated with complications such as embolization um, uh, and even infective complications. So in my mind, the ideal set of patients would be those where radiological intervention is either impossible or very difficult to achieve and the classical um, uh, cause of portal hypertension in that context would be portal vein thrombosis with no radiological options, although there are some radiological options, sometimes these fail. And as we described in our study, um, uh, most of our patients had surgery. Some of them had uh, complications of portal hypertension from malignant disease such as cholangiocarcinoma, and in these patients, uh, blood transfusions and bouncing in and out of hospital because of severe bleeding from small bowel viruses. When they bleed, they bleed. Uh, makes the quality of life, especially if it is uh, short, a uh, shortened life, um, uh, difficult. So there is great value in uh, applying this therapy, as we have shown, in a subgroup of patients where there is no other option. And although the numbers are small, as I said, um, we have shown that it can be very effective and it can almost obviate the need for transfusion requirements and reduce the risk of bleeding from varices um, in this subgroup of patients. So I think it is an option. Okay. So uh, when we have a patient with uh, a small bowel varices uh, not deemed for radiological intervention, how do we select the route of insertion for the double balloon? Enteroscopy. Yes, yes, Alberto. Um, uh, good question. Uh, the diagnostic um, value of radiology is critical in this context because many a time we rely on radiological appearances of small bowel varices. As we saw in our cohort of patients, all of them had diagnostic yep. uh, cross section imaging of the small bowel with uh, triple phase mesenteric andrography to diagnose the presence or suspicion of small bowel varices. Most of them also had a capsule um, uh, for the diagnosis to confirm. And uh, you can uh, gauge uh, the 
proximity to the uh, ileocecal valve uh, or the bioloris, um, which will then uh, guide your route of approach. Uh, so most of our patients had anterograde double balloons. We went down the top end, but um, uh, another of them also required a retrograde approach because of extensive varices even distally. So in terms of technique, is there any difference from the um, technique that we normally use for gastric varices? Yes, good question too. Um, so the technique relies on a high gauge needle, uh, so a 21 uh, gauge needle, and uh, we uh, are very cautious in uh, how we prepare for it. So the room is all set up with uh, files of lepiodol and cyanoacrylate, which is mixed one is to one. Um, uh, we tend to uh, wash the channel with lepiodol so that if any cyanoacrylate gets into the uh, into the scope, it doesn't ruin it. And uh, we are cautious about how to inject and when to inject. I tend to prime the needle with a bit of lepiodol. And then once I get a good stable view of the varix, um, uh, I place the uh, needle um, rather rapidly into the varix and the nurse starts injecting or my assistant starts injecting um, uh, the mixture of glue and lepiodol. In, in light of the fact that the needle would have already been primed with lepiodol, um, uh, I'd know whether I'm within the varix or within the submucosal space, usually we're already in the varix and as soon as I see confirmation that we're in the varix we continue injecting and then we go with a small volume of glue. I don't usually inject more than two mils of glue um, and that is injected relatively slowly to prevent um, any or re reduce the risk of any embolization uh, elsewhere. Okay, and do you have the tip of the balloon, uh, um, of the balloon of the scope balloon inflate during the injection to gain um, more stability? Yes, uh, I've used both. Um, uh, if it is a relatively unstable position, we tend to uh, keep the uh, balloon of the scope inflated because that allows you to you know, control the situation a bit better. But there are some situations where um, uh, that's not very helpful and we just use um, uh, the scope balloon deflated. I want to also mention that it is important uh, to do this under antibiotic cover because there's always a risk that the uh, the thrombosed um, uh, varix uh, will get infected once the needle goes through and you get that, that solidification of the cyanoacrylate once it solidifies into a relatively hard gel. So we do this under antibiotic cover. And if you have uh, several <coughs> nets of varices, I mean, is it safe to uh, treat one varices and go beyond distally and treat other varices? How do you do? Do you treat first and then go distally or do you go distally and treat uh, when you came back? Um, uh, through our experience, although you know, the numbers are small, uh, just because sometimes a bit of residual glue and lepidol seeps out of the injection parts, we tend to go and hunt for nests of varices as deep as possible, get a good understanding of the extent of the varices first, and then start treating distally to proximally. And so as we start coming out, Withdrawing, we, we yeah. start um, treating uh, because that uh, reduces any issues with, you know, um, stuff getting stuck to the scope or the overtube or the balloons. Very low risk, I think, but still, you know, it, it makes sense to actually treat and come, come back. So Alberto, then summary, our series, what has it actually uh, shown? Well, this therapeutic modality um, should be reserved for a selected category of patient because we s have to bear in mind that there always there is a risk of uh, thromboembolism and uh, septic complication, although it's small. But it actually has a good value because it reduces the risk of uh, small bowel uh, uh, bleeding, obviating the need for uh, blood transfusion. So in conclusion, Alberto, um, uh, although our study is small, because this is not a common um, uh, occurrence, as you mentioned, small bowel varices are relatively rare, but they can be devastating in terms of their impact on uh, you know, admissions and bleeding, especially in patients who have malignant disease. And in a select group of patients, we have shown that uh, it can provide good respite and effective care. 
minimally invasive care as, as a last bastion. Yes, I absolutely agree. And also there were no uh, periprocedural complications. Of a and uh, again, double balloon endoscopy is demonstrated to be an effective and a safe procedure uh, as well. So thank you for watching our uh, small video relating to our paper uh, on double balloon facilitated cyanacrylate injection of small bowel varices. Um, uh, it's been an honor and a pleasure to be able to speak to you about this and uh, continue to read GIE. Thank you.